Hello everyone, Ryan from Avatar Aquatics. This is a cherry barb fry and today I'll show you how to breed these amazing fish. Let's get started. So these are my adult cherry barb breeders. They get to around two inches in length and are sexually dimorphic, meaning the males look different from the females. The females are brown in color compared to the males and much rounder around the belly when they're carrying eggs like this female here. It's a good idea to keep both sexes in a school even if you don't have plans to breed because the males will color up very nicely when there are females around. Now the males are brilliant red, slimmer, and generally smaller such as this male here, but size can vary based on nutrition too so it isn't a great indicator of sex. They're pretty easy fish and don't necessarily need to be fed live foods to breed so regular fish flakes or pellets are fine, just feed them a lot before. So over here is the breeding setup. Now you'll notice that I have some floating stem plants on here and that's to give them a sense of safety and security. It's optional, but I find that it helps. Now over here I have a mesh that's connected to the size of this shoebox breeder and it's basically used as a way to stop the cherry barbs from going down to the bottom and eating their eggs because they will eat their eggs. I used hot glue guns to sort of just cement everything in place and this has the added benefit of being completely waterproof and also removable. Now take a look at how shallow this actual spawning container is. The middle part, the deepest part, is only about two inches or so, and then the sides are an inch or even less. And this triggers them to spawn because they think that they're in really, really shallow water. Now, as I briefly mentioned before, the cherry barbs like to spawn at first light, meaning in the morning, very, very early in the morning. So what I usually do is put them into the tub the night before or the evening before, go to sleep, and in the morning I'll have eggs at the very bottom. But don't worry if you don't see eggs on the first day. In this case, it took them three days to spawn. A lot of factors can go into it, such as whether or not they're comfortable with the setup. Or in this case, what I did was I did a water change as well as I fed them a little bit just to mimic a rainfall in the wild and also an abundance of food so they know that if they did lay eggs, their babies will have enough to eat. As for water parameters, I like to keep these at about 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. And as long as you don't have a buildup of ammonia or nitrites with water changes, you should be fine. Okay, so it's been three days and I've removed everything above the mesh, including the mesh itself. So you can see that my cherry barbs have already spawned. Some of these eggs aren't fertile though, and I'll show you guys how to tell. In this case, this is the first time the cherry barbs have spawned, so they may be a little inexperienced. Now I've collected some things from a breeder container after a day to show you guys. As I zoom in, pay attention to the middle and the left as this guy zooms around. They've already hatched and are in the wiggler stage. Now take a look at their color. The yellow transparent color is their yolk sac, and in a fertilized egg, that same color will dominate. If you look closely, you'll also see even tinier white dots moving around, and that is infusoria, a great fry food. You can also see an unfertilized egg, which is white, opaque, and starting to fungus over. A fertilized egg will take about one to two days to hatch, another two days to become free swimming, at which point the fry will start to eat the infusoria around the tank. To prevent fungus growing on unfertilized eggs spreading to the fertilized ones, I use a little trick. 1% methylene blue is the best antifungal medication for fish eggs. It's safe for fry, easy to use, and even cures ick, which I've shown in another video. The only thing is it will stain the container and your hands and clothes if you get any methylene blue on them. On the day I notice the spawn and before the eggs hatch, I will do a water change with aquarium water and suction out the leftover food. Then I will add a few drops of methylene blue and stir really well. Since the eggs only take one or two days to hatch, I only need to apply once. As the eggs become wigglers, there's no more need for methylene blue and it becomes just another regular aquarium to handle. Take a look at the bottom of the aquarium. See if you can spot any fertilized eggs. The clear ones, which are sort of yellow, even in this blue tint, 
are the fertilized ones. And I can spot five. They're like little tiny jewels just on the bottom of the tank. Now compare it to this one, which is white, fuzzy, and opaque, which is an unfertilized egg and needs to be removed. Welcome to the science nerd slash microscopy section of this video. At 100 times magnification, we can see the head of the embryo wrap around this yolk sac in a very tight circle. And even in a tiny organism this small, not even born yet, we can see so much structure in here. There's yolk sac, and look at the way its body is. There's segments, and those segments are going to become vertebrae, what we call somites in biology. This is a side view. Take a look to see if you can see the head, the eyes, the body, and the tail before I put the labels in. I'm so amazed at the amount of things going on, the amount of things that have to go right in order for an egg to hatch into a wiggler. And look at its heartbeat, how fascinating is that? And I'm just going to tell you this is a unfertilized egg, you can guess what the fuzzy stuff is. And those little blue ciliates, they're blue because the methylene blue dyed them blue and they're still alive. And look at that paramecium. And if everything goes right, within two to three days, this is what we see. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I'm so glad to have been able to make this video. Look at the way the needle is pointing to his eyes. That's called the lens placode. And look at the way the blood is just flowing through the yolk. How cool is that? I could see his heart again. Anyways, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a like or subscribing to my channel. I'm so happy to be able to make these videos for you and I will see you guys next time.